We are the Gandhi boys. We are musicians. Daniel Sewa Good Day, Craig Fuss, and myself, Dennis Mugaga. We have just returned from Uganda, where we were on a mission to visit the northern part, a Germany district, but Numanzi refugee camp in particular. It wasn't an easy task. With the security tensions around the region, we of course had to seek permission from the office of the Prime Minister to head up there. We met with um, the Minister for Preparedness, Disaster and Refugees, who cleared us to head to the camp and see firsthand the dire conditions that the refugees from South Sudan are living in. My name is Musa Echuero. I am a member of parliament for Amuria and a minister responsible for relief, disaster preparedness and refugees in the government of Uganda. I want to welcome the Uganda Foundation to Uganda. Welcome back to your roots. And I want to specifically welcome you and recommend you to support my refugees in Ajumane who happened to be from the Republic of South Sudan. It was a really, really long journey, but obviously not without its challenges. We covered an area of over 30 kilometers without breaks. Our volunteer driver, Mr. James Kakuru, did everything he could to ensure we were safe. When I received your call as Ganda Foundation, yes. indicating that you want to see these people and probably give some support, yes. the fact that you are black people excited me. I'm not racist, okay. but I'm only saying charity doesn't only belong to white people. Yes. There can be black people just like who are as good as white people. With the Ganda Boys, we have such a good opportunity for using music as a tool for social transformation. Uh, what does that mean? That means we can get our songs out there. We can make uh, wonderful connections with governments. The ministers accept us because we're musicians. We just want to make a difference in the world. I recommend you to go to Ajumani refugee camp in the West Nile part of Uganda. I also recommend you, with any little help that you might have found, to particularly target women. Some of them have run to Uganda with only one dress, because escaping does not allow for preparation. So I wanted to thank everyone who donated recently, especially the clothes that went directly to the refugee camps this last week. And uh, please become members of the Ganda Foundation it would be wonderful that you could uh, keep track of what we're doing and plus make regular donations. But please bring your clothes particularly, that's needed. It's not enough for us as a government or United Nations to just give portion and beans and rice and fortified food. We must be able to address the unique needs of women and the girl children. On the arrival we were given a brief by uh, Titus who was in charge of uh, this settlement camp. We had a, a chat about what was going on and we also told him what we had brought with us. And just a couple of minutes from there, he said, we have bad news. He actually had a phone call and they told him there is an outbreak of cholera. So we then had to finish whatever it is that we were doing and head to the resettlement camp and then hand over what we had brought with us. So you can imagine, just a couple of minutes, things change. Uh, you know, we could have ended up not even reaching out to the, to the refugees themselves because of that very problem. The resources that we are going to see being distributed to the needy refugees, and my appeal is to all Ugandans in the diaspora that this is the right way 
to go. We had over 400 kilograms of donations, by the way, uh, clothes and shoes and everything. So we had to transfer these into um, the commandant, the, re the refugee camp commandant, the gentleman in charge of, of the refugee camp, Mr. Uh, Titus Jogo, um, and get everything into his car and then head uh, to Numanzi camp. We covered an area of about another 40 kilometers. Our car has a brake problem and it has to go to the garage. Now the mighty Cax has got to do double job. He's been <laughs> driving all morning and all day and now he has to go to the garage. You see, the community has some talented people who fix our brakes because we have to make the journey back to Central. We successfully got there and it was just such an amazing uh, and heartbreaking scene on arrival. <laughs> There were various organizations, I'll call them traditional organizations, that joined us um, on arrival at the camp. World Food Program, UNHCR, to mention but a few. They shared with us the amount of work they were they are overwhelmed with and some of the interventions they seek to adopt in order to combat the, their situation in the camp. We uh, provide cash because we think it provides them the opportunity to, 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 to diversify what they need to eat and because on food we only provide one ration day in day out. So it came to that time where we had to give the good news that we had carried with us a donation of two million Ugandan shillings and um, over 400 kilograms worth of clothes, shoes, slippers, and all the others. I met this beautiful lady called Martha. Martha is a refugee. Martha was so, so angry. I can't explain. Angry and so desperate with what was going on. She explained how she, she had been a refugee Three times. Mm -hmm. I was refugees in Ethiopia mm -hmm. in 1989. Oh, you were a refugee? Yes, in Ethiopia. In Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. Then again, I came here refugees in Uganda in a mm -hmm. place called Mirai in Germany here in 95. Mm -hmm. I was being refugees. Mm -hmm. Then 2006, that is the time I went to my place mm -hmm. because there is a war. Now the war came, the, there was a peace. Mm -hmm. The war came now. Mm -hmm. Now, even now, I don't have hope because I've been refugees for three times. I uh, lost everything, mm -hmm. the life, the wealth, mm -hmm. everything, even the job, mm -hmm. even the dogmen. Now, I don't have the dogmen. Martha was a, a pharmacist, you know, in Sudan, and she explained how she wanted to go back to school and learn more, and which I definitely, you know, advised, and I said UCLA extension program will definitely work in these circumstances. I need to go back to study again and to have at least a document because now I don't have a document mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to study about the mm -hmm. pharmacies, about the drugs. Despite all that she went through, she said, I have hope and I know that the world is going to be a better place. When somebody in that condition says something like that, it is, it is very, um, it's very touching. I'm a disabled person, but I'm actively looking forward to at least to raise these children up because the world will change. You always wonder where your donations end. It was very humbling when we handed the money over to um, the camp commandant, Mr. Titus Jogo, and he straight away handed it over to the refugee chairman, Jacob. I would also hand it over to the chairman, Jacob. Are you Jacob? Yeah, Jacob. Of, of, of the group. He receives it, they will sit and find out how he can support them. Can I do that to get up for? Okay. Thank you very much. Yes, 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 yes. The Refugees and World Food Program and all the other organizations in place have come up 
with the Cash for Refugees initiative, where refugees have the independence to feed um, on to decide on what sort of food they buy locally and which aligns with their own uh, needs. One thing that we know is that these people have been using cash. Crossing the borders will not make them not know how to use the cash. They've been planning for their families. So this is one thing that we have discovered and it's a brainchild between OPM, the government of Uganda, UNSCR and WFP. And each time we want to, to do anything about it, we get together and try to plan together. We would like to extend our thanks to our partners who will enable us bring the, ex the education programs into the settlement camps. UCLA, the University of California and Los Angeles extension program. We would also like to thank Middlesex University, mainly the television department, for always being there to capture and help us tell the stories. We would like to extend a thanks to Klaus Nobel, senior member of the Nobel Peace Prize family, who is working with us tirelessly to make sure that awareness about the almost 60 million displaced people across the globe is created. We would love to thank you, the donors of the Ganda Foundation, Big Yellow Storage, for giving us the space to store all the donations that our donors give us in terms of clothes, toys, books, and all of that. We would love to thank the Ugandan government and the minister, um, Mr. Echweru Moses, for accepting us and being there with us. And this partnership for us has been very inspiring, and I think that there's the world's is the limit, really. Not, nothing is the limit for what we can do. <laughs>